Show Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. A few people in the Twitch chat there creeped out by my looking into the camera at them. And bro, I'm creeped out looking at you guys, so you're probably not going to see much more of it, just so you know. Mike is here and his beautiful setup, whatever that is. Not even sure. I actually just got a picture for the first time of what your actual setup looks like. Yeah. Now I'm obsessed. Now we got to fix that. I don't know what's Why? going on over there. What do you mean? Look at this. How great is this? It's, dude, it's... Why am I the only guy on the wrestling website with something. a bunch of wrestling stuff behind him? Well, I actually did a show with a belt behind me, but I, I can't figure out how to set it up right now, but that's another story for another day. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't have your, like, karate, like, you know, trophy case there when you were, like, dude, I got all my I got all my jiu-jitsu belts medals. up there on the deal. Right, let's talk about the news here. So... Friday Night SmackDown, 2.133 million viewers on Fox, the highest number since September 11. And, of course, keep in mind everything that's been going on with, with SmackDown and everything else. Way up from last week when SmackDown aired on FS1 due to the World Series being on Fox, last night's overnight viewership up 7.3% from two weeks ago when SmackDown last aired on Fox, 18-49, to 49.6 rating. Up 140%, although that was the FS1 number, so you can kind of throw that out. And up 20% from the last Fox episode. They aired Shark Tank for the top spot in the 18 to... Uh, they tied Shark Tank for the first spot in 18 to 34.3. A lot of comparisons to last week, but you can pretty much throw out last week. Unless you really want to... The only value of talking about last week is if you want to compare last week to the AW and NXT numbers. But if you're going to compare last week's SmackDown to this week's SmackDown, I mean, don't even bother. Numbers consistent throughout last night's show. 2.115 million viewers for the first hour, climbing 1.7% to 2.151 in hour two. The only show SmackDown beat on the networks in terms of overall viewers, a repeat of NBC's American Ninja Warrior. I wonder if Casey Catanzaro was on that one. And a CBS News special called The Deciders. Apparently that one was not hot amongst the youngsters. So, we could talk about SmackDown all you guys want today, but... I mean, the one thing I'm going to say about SmackDown is... This is going to sound weird, but hear me out. SmackDown reminded me of the Monday Night Wars, to a degree. And I'll tell you why. If you watch those old Raw shows... I mean, there was a lot of bad stuff on Raw, and especially on Nitro as things went going during the Monday Night Wars, but there was also some great stuff, and the reality is that not everything was great, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Vince McMahon, uh, The Rock, I mean, you had shows where they were the only thing on the show of any value, but because they were so big, I mean, it just lifted the entire show, so you had all this other stuff that sucked, but people stuck around to watch it because they were waiting to see Stone Cold or The Rock or whoever. So, SmackDown is not as good as the shows during the Monday Night Wars, but I watched that SmackDown show, and the opening segment is Roman Reigns and Jey Uso, and it was fantastic. And they had the segment with the Mysterio family, and I thought Aaliyah Mysterio was fantastic. And if you've been watching a lot of the Mysterio family stuff, Aaliyah's not always fantastic. In fact, there have been a lot of segments backstage where I feel like I'm watching a, a bad high school play. Or about a week ago when they did the angle where she she hugged Murphy and I'm watching it and I just remembered like when I was in sixth grade and we were doing square dancing and they like partnered you up with some girl and you were all awkward. That's what Aaliyah looked like hugging Buddy Murphy. Total change this week. She was fantastic in that segment. It was She was great. And then at the end of the show, we went back to Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. So really, three segments on the show were so good that I don't even remember what else happened on the show. I mean, some of it I know was not good because I think there was that, I hate to say because people might get mad, but that women's match. I mean, there was some stuff on the show that was no good, but when you when you put everything together and you just watch those three segments, it lifted the entire show. So anyway, your thoughts on this, Mike? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a top-heavy show, but the top is great, you know? And the one thing you didn't mention was Sasha and Bailey, and regardless of what you think of their feud and how it has gone and things that maybe they should or shouldn't have done, 
they are two personalities, especially Sasha, that garner interest. So when you have that going for you, when you have, you know, and those fans, look, they I'm not saying they'll excuse anything, but they are in rapt attention when it comes to Bailey and Sasha. And that's good. You got people hooked on that. You have people hooked on, you know, what is and a cheesy novella in some ways. But, you know, we'll see how it all plays out with Seth and Murphy and, and the Mysterio family. But that's something that was tailor made for SmackDown. That was one of the smartest things they did. And you could see it coming as soon as they moved. Uh, Ray Mysterio over. You knew what was going to happen with everybody kind of falling into place, but it's the perfect type of, of story, I think, to have on SmackDown. And obviously, the, the very top is fantastic. And now we seem to be possibly moving into Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. And, you know, the, you're going to have a bunch of rehash stories from the past, but the way this character is of Roman Reigns and what you have surrounding him right now with his cousins falling into line, with Paul Heyman, who hasn't even really had to do anything i'm not saying behind the scenes but on camera he hasn't had to do anything all of that stuff is humming so good that you know two hours of smackdown regardless of what's on the undercard is still easier than anything you put on on raw no matter what your you know look thinking your main event is i guess my point to the whole thing is i'm not saying that roman is the guy or the the storyline with Aaliyah, but the reality is all you need is one thing yeah. All you need is one thing to explode. And once that happens, like everything gets lifted. I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin, we're not going to have another one for a while. We may never have another rock again. But you get one storyline. And the storyline with Ali, I mean, the key is we actually have a storyline on a WWE program with someone who's under the age of 30. I don't know if she's legitimately under the age of 20. I'm actually not sure. I feel like she's older and they call her 19. I could be wrong about that. But we actually have a young person involved in a storyline with her brother, by the way, who's another young person. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.